There will be no personal nor direct attacks on anyone. And I would ask that you please try to um, keep down the loud cheering and the clapping. There will be no booing and no unruly behavior. With that. <laughs> this is painful and it will be for a long time. Donald Trump, baby. That's right. This man knows what's up. After all, these are a couple of high stepping tur uh, turkeys and you know what to say about a high stepper. No step too high for a high stepper. This is Midday Mobile with Sean Sullivan on FM Talk 106.5. Well, Sean's a tough guy. I mean, I think everybody knows that. You know, Sean, uh, he took some licks. He hangs in there. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? I mean, the beer we got drank pretty good, don't it? Did you hear what I said? So this is a brave council. I had no doubt about them. That doesn't suck. If you don't like it, too bad. Last question. Were you high on drugs? Last question. Kiss my Right, away we go. FM Talk 106.5, Midday Mobile, Monday style. Glad to have you along and a couple hours of live local talk. Lots to do on today's show. I, and we're going to get to uh, our first guest up, as I said at the end of Jeff's show, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Alabama, Will Ainsworth, joins us in just a second. But I do want to take like, like 30 seconds to a minute here just to say big thanks to all of y'all that came out Saturday night for the Joy of Life Ball on the Gulf Coast for St. Jude, raising money for St. Jude. It was fun to be back on stage with Nicolette Schleisman from WKRG, see everybody, you know, we had the year off because of, of COVID, but to see the tables filled up and all the people out there, and uh, I ran the, the live auction, and wow, wow, well done, y'all. Y'all raised a whole bunch of money for St. Jude. Talk about uh, the king and got to meet the queens. We had co-queens this year and the king of the uh, St. Jude Joy of Life Ball, and it was just it's just special. It's a special event. It's a fun ball, as I've told y'all before, and those that came saw what I'm talking about. It's a fun Mardi Gras ball, but with the funds going to St. Jude, it is just, it's perfect. And uh, y'all are the reason it's a success. Y'all came out and support it big time, and uh, love you for it. All right? Uh, so, And by the way, too, coming up on the uh, 26th of February, the FM Talk 106.5 Mobile Command Unit. That's our studio on wheels, but we're going to have it as a, uh, a part of the parade for, for St. Jude and Joy of Life on uh, on Saturday the 26th. So make sure to holler at us. We'll throw you some throws as we come through the streets of downtown Mobile. All right. Uh, let's welcome to the air, back on the air, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Alabama, Will Ainsworth. Thanks for being here. Yeah, good afternoon. Great to be with you, and uh, congrats on the successful event this past weekend. That's great to hear. Yeah, when you can combine a fun Mardi Gras ball and help St. Jude at the same time, well, it's it's it, it, it's good. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah, no, that's a win-win for sure. This is, uh, and I want to talk to you about a subject today. This was uh, launched last week, but something you and I had talked about in the past, and I said, when this gets closer, you and I got to talk about uh, the uh, Alabama Small Business Commission and uh, the legislative package to support that. First of all, Lieutenant Governor, tell us about what you're tasked with here in the Alabama Small Business Commission. Yeah, so I think you certainly know this. I don't know if your listeners do, but my background has been involved in small businesses. Um, we've got a real estate construction company. We had a business called Dream Ranch, done trade shows. So when I got elected Lieutenant Governor, Governor Ivey asked me to chair and take over the Small Business Commission. That's traditionally, historically, has always been in the governor's office. It's now under our office, and so what we've been tasked with doing, what I've tasked our members to do, it's made up of business owners throughout the state. It's made up of some House and Senate members, but we're really looking at what can we do to help small businesses. We've lost right at 8,000 small businesses in the state since the pandemic began, and wow. uh, you know, it's my opinion it's time to make sure we help our small businesses in the state. They're our backbone. Um, and here, to be honest, most small businesses don't have the ability – to lobby their legislators to get stuff passed. And so we feel a huge responsibility to look out for that. And uh, really excited about the package of bills we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and you make a great point. I've talked about this before. We just, there are people say, well, there's more people employed by small business and any other business in, in the U.S. And, and here in Alabama. And that's all true, but it is disorganized. It's balkanized, right? We don't have one united front uh we're all spot you know I can look there's butchers bakers and candlestick makers but we all don't get together and think about here's what we need legislatively you know or, or have we may agree but we don't have any person like you said lobbying going in and, and saying these are the needs of small businesses so that that's really important for our state yeah and you know honored to carry the mantle for that we're gonna you know continue to push for small businesses you know i mean during the special session um you know we had a appropriation of the seventy nine point five million that we recommended for the unemployment trust fund. 
and that's already passed, but that would have been a 29% tax increase on the unemployment trust fund for employers in 2022 because we took some of the ARPA money, put that into uh, making sure we got the unemployment trust fund back where it needed to be. There won't be a tax increase now, which is huge. Yeah, it is. Uh, a lot of people are watching that. Uh, with these uh, the, the bills in the legislative agenda, kind of walk us through uh, the different bills and, and what they do for small business. Sure, yeah, we'll start with uh, some of the tax cuts. So first, um, I'm sure your business owners out there, they're familiar with a thing called a business privilege tax. Uh, it's, you know, it's levied on corporations, businesses, LLCs, other entities. Um, you know, we have a bill that will repeal that. And so you don't have to get that. Another one that's already passed the House, uh, Representative Danny Garrett, I uh, got this passed uh, last week, I believe, um, dealing with ad valorem and uh, personal property taxes, the exemption up to $40,000 on businesses, uh, tax cut can reduce paperwork. Um, you know, we think that's important. Uh, Senator Orr uh, has a bill uh, dealing with uh, income tax exemption for the first $10,000 of proceeds from a 401k or IRA. Uh, I think Representative Greer is the uh, House member that's sponsoring that. Um, but the idea is that for those that are 65 and older, again, trying to make us a destination for retirement, right? Okay. And uh, making sure we're not taxing that. We think that's important. Um, another one that I uh, passed last week, um, a state income tax um, exemption uh, for federal child tax credits, earned in tax, um, tax credits, child dependent tax credit under the American Rescue Plan Act. Basically, to boil it down to this, right, if you got money under the American Rescue Plan Act under that, for instance, it was based on the number of kids you had, um, you know, things like that. So mm-hmm. the money came in. We didn't think the state should tax that. I agree with and the so state. That, <laughs> I agree with you all. <laughs> right. And so, I mean, but it would have been taxed. Right? right. And so we passed the bill and got that done that was a dan roberts and that was a big number i want to say i forget the exact number but it was a big number so we got that huge yeah wasn't it Um, 70 or 80 mil i forget i had the number in front of me i don't now but it was big correct yeah and so that was uh important um you know talking about y'all's area on the coast right seasonal workers because obviously tourism's huge in y'all's area you know having students having college kids you know seasonal workers um, where when they left, not having to, um, a bill that exempts employers from having to play unemployment taxes on those individuals. Uh, Senator Elliott, you know, champion for y'all's area, he's carrying that. Um, holiday season's another time where that's important. And, um, you know, that's something we're going to do to try to help small businesses. Okay. So, yeah, one I mean, of my t- favorite bills is this next one. Okay. And it's a work uh, search requirement. So, right now, if someone is unemployed or able bodied, they can go work. If they want to, you know, to meet the requirements of the law, continue getting it, they can uh, apply for a job once a week, and they don't even have to show up. So they can send an application, call, say, hey, I need an interview. At, okay, okay, you need to come tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And then if that, if that person does not show up for the interview, they met the requirements just by scheduling the interview. This bill is going to mandate they have to apply five times a week, and then they have to notify the Department of Labor with documentation and not only do they apply, but they also um, you went and showed up. And, and the intent of this is to make sure that people are actively searching for work that are able to work. Okay. We cannot have a society or a state that is dependent on government and where people are just you know sitting at home getting a check when they could be working. Lieutenant so Governor, I want to make stop it a little bit harder to get unemployment. Stop you for a second. So the way it stands now, see this uh, this eye opener for me. I mean, we pay into this as a small business, but. So if somebody is unemployed and they just once a week they they set up you know set an appointment to go but they, they they don't show up they continue to be current for their requirements for unemployment even if they didn't show That's up to correct. the correct and yeah and my understanding oh, is wow. you have to apply you have to drop something off you have to um, I'm sorry not drop something off you have to you know actually apply to place set up an interview. And we had business owners that said, Will, look, small business owners, restaurants, different things. So we have people that are meeting the requirements of the Department of Labor, but then they're not even showing up for an interview. And so they're basically just beating the system. Uh-huh. So we're trying to fix that. 
I, I didn't. Yeah, that needs to be fixed. I mean, people always talk about how people take advantage of unemployment. That's that. Now somebody's written it down here where I can see it. I, I get it. Yeah, that needs to be changed. Yeah. So we're trying to get in the weeds on that and get that. And that is just simple, right? I mean, we don't. To your point, we don't want anybody taking advantage of it. Um, and um, there's obviously situations where people need it. Um, mm-hmm. There's also times where people do not. And uh, our thought is we want people to actually be looking for work. There's a lot of jobs out there. The number one thing I hear from businesses over and over, and you've heard me say this before, the number one limiting factor to growth is people. Mm-hmm. And so we want to try to get these people back in the workforce. Uh, State Representative Paul Lee has a bill dealing with uh, – clarification on providing rental or leasing services um, not required to get a business license in each municipality that was just dealing with you know a company if they send a piece of machinery or if they send you know um, whatever it was I, I forget exactly the thing that had them do this let's just say you're in the leasing business or the rental business or okay. um, you know whatever business you're in that deals with a lot of different cities um, they were having to get a business license in each city, and some of these cities were writing them up. And so his bill deals with that, um, you know, just clarification on that, and that would not be required, for instance, if, um, you know, you're renting something in a, in a city, but you're not actually having a physical presence in that city. So, And yeah. I think his bill with some medical devices and things like that. So. But that's good. some of the legislation we're working on. Yeah, I want to ask I think you about it's really one. Going to help people. Yeah, you were talking about getting people back. You know, and we're talking about getting people back in the workforce. And I mean, the jobs are out there. I saw this. There's an appropriation from uh, ETF to the Alabama Community College system. It's to train. I mean, it's like specific training, right, for the jobs, like the jobs that are there. I, 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 I think it's eighteen thirty-five. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you know, that's for the innovation center, and the idea is that. You know, Alabama's really becoming known, you know, as a smart state. And, um, you know, from the industry we have here, um, you you look down in y'all's area, what's going on with uh, Lockheed had a big announcement Mm -hmm. last week. And, you know, traditionally those those jobs were in California and they were in Colorado. I mean, and now they're coming to Alabama. But with that, we're going to need a lot of engineers. We're going to need a lot of, um, you know, different uh, PhDs. And we're also going to need a lot of people trained in different manufacturing specs and innovation, potentially things, cybersecurity is another thing that's coming up. And so this money is going to go, you know, the community college system, not necessarily to get the engineers and the PhDs, but to get the people that can go in and build things and figure out, you know, how can we make sure we're meeting the needs of today, but also the jobs of tomorrow. And I think that's going to be really important. You know, I think what's appealing is when you can get that uh, kind of pipeline or what is the cliche of the year, silo, right? <laughs> Put it in a silo, um, where you could say, all right, y'all, here's the jobs that are needed. Here's the pay range of those jobs needed. Here's the skill set. Here's how long it takes to train. And those jobs are waiting for you. When you do that, I, you know, there's always people that won't go after those jobs. But I think there's a lot of people, when you can make that case to them, they're going to say, hey, that that's interesting. I want to do that. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And I think uh, part of that's, you know, we've got to continue to educate high school students about what's out there. Our community college system does a good job, and it's going to continue to expand on what they're doing. And, uh, again, can't brag on y'all's area enough. When you look at Mobile and Baldwin County, what's going on in South Alabama, you know, it's exciting. Um, it's one of the, you know, Baldwin County's fastest-growing county in the state. And we want to make sure that we're, you know, they've got a really exciting workforce development center over there that um, not part of this, but part of our workforce initiative that we're going to try to support. Talked to Senator Elliott about that last week. But, you know, our kids are our future. And with 60% of the students in this state not getting a two- or four-year degree finishing, we got to do a better job of getting students prepared for the workforce. And uh, that's one of my top priorities. Absolutely. Just joining us, talking to Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth. Again, this is kind of a broader question to wrap up on. But, you know, we think about it in conversations you and I had uh, during the shutdown. And, uh, you know, you were talking about this a bunch around the state. Are we are we in a better place? Let's say, God forbid, because uh, it's not over. But let's say something else comes comes. It was of the same unknown level as uh, we dealt with with the shutdown in Alabama. Do we have the protections in place to where the small businesses get to, you know, if the big box store gets to stay open, that the small business gets to stay open? Have we have we addressed that? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I think, um, you know, from a small – and look, I advocate for small business. We push for that, but we're going to make sure small businesses get treated the same. And, uh, 
I, I don't see a situation like that ever occurring. Okay, because I mean that you know that that was an eye opener for for a lot of us out here, and uh, and knowing that we had that problem, but we we have it fixed right going forward. No, absolutely. I mean, I think there's stuff in place to make sure that you know, all businesses are treated the same, and uh, that's important. Lieutenant Governor, we appreciate your time. Look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully, get down here on the southern side of the state and uh, come visit with us in the studio. Yeah, we'd love that. Have a great day. You too. There he is, Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth. Coming right back, grab your calls and text at 343-0106. Plus, speaking of Montgomery, District 105, your rep, Chip Brown, is going to be joining us here shortly. Midday Mobile with Sean Sullivan on FM Talk 106.5. Y'all have, uh, y'all have a good weekend. We're here at Moon Pie Minute and thinking about Mobile Downtown Mardi Gras getting fired up this Friday. I'm getting fired up as well. Remember, Moon Pie Minute every day now through Ash Wednesday. And you can catch the Moon Pie Minute by uh, going to our website. You can go back and like binge listen, catch up with it. Also, uh, Leanna uh, does a fantastic job of putting the Moon Pie Minute out on Facebook as well. So hopefully you're following us, facebook.com slash FM Talk 106.5. Uh, you can catch those in the evenings when they post up as well. But Moon Pie Minute throughout the day, each day from now through Ash Wednesday, even weekend, weekends, all that good stuff. It's on there. The story of Mardi Gras. Uh, so y'all uh, continue to check it out. All right. Uh, text of plenty here. Let's see. Yeah, Dale, I, I agree. Uh, I, I had a reaction to that the same way. Dale says the fact that a business privilege, in quotes, privilege, in quotes, tax exists makes me want to puke every time I hear the words. State of Alabama should be the one's privilege that we decide to do a uh, build a business here, not the other way around. Uh, I, Dale, I don't disagree with any of those things. Um, uh, somebody who I know and knows that business says I can confirm from uh, confirm that from the rental equipment business. Yeah, I mean if your if your business is based in any town Alabama, but you got to you know, uh, but you rent stuff to somebody over there in and and you know Sullivan Town, you shouldn't. Yeah, I mean your business is based where it's based. That's where you should pay if you should pay, right, Dale? Uh, a name texter says. Uh, Heck, 20 years ago, all someone had to do was call the unemployment office once a week and answer the automated questions like, quote, were you able to work? Were you actively searching for work? So, and then goes on to say, and it's weird, referencing to 2002 and 2003 being 20 years ago. Well, unnamed texture, we're all getting older. That's for sure. I remember hearing it. I never called, never called it, uh, but I remember hearing it. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my roommates uh, worked in the media business. And he would call the thing, but I never knew how it worked. I knew he'd have to get on the phone and call them and do that thing. But I think that lasted for a few months, and then he was back employed. Um, never did make the call. I mean, I've been, been because of a non compete The only time I was without work was a non-compete. When I, when I moved, when we started the station. When I moved here from another station that some people remember me from. Um, it's a long time ago, wasn't it? Uh, but for six months, I had to stay off the radio. Can I even talk about this? Am I in trouble? But they get you know, a non-compete thing. But it was not specific. It was just specific to they didn't want me on the radio. So did all kind of cool stuff. I did uh, work for the Mobile Boat Show folks and painted houses and gig flounder and did all kind of stuff in that time period. It was uh, it was good. It was some uh, some chance for six months of jobs that, you know, just to test them out, see, see what was up, and then went back into this business. All right. Uh, Somebody ask, so it's a legislative package. So what happens is the uh, Alabama Small Business Commission then finds certain bills and they find – because they have to find a member of the House or Senate, right, to push the bill. So you have this commission that's over it that's, that's got the lieutenant governor overseeing it. But, yeah, they have to find individual members of the, the House and Senate to carry those bills. Like he said, you've got uh, Arthur Orr in it. You have uh, Lynn Green in it. You have Jim Carnes in it. You have uh, – 
and here it is. So they, they, it's a package of bills, but they are brought individually by uh, Paul Lee's and individual members of the legislature. Speaking of individual members of the legislature, see what I did there? It's a segue, and it, it segues into the fact we'll talk to District 105 Representative Chip Brown next, right here on Midday Mobile. This is Midday Mobile with Sean Sullivan on FM Talk 1065. All right, 1235, FM Talk 1065, Midday Mobile. Glad to have y'all along. Let's check in with District 105 Representative Chip Brown. An update on another week in Montgomery. Uh, Representative, are we are we at half? Are we on the back nine yet? Where are we in the session? No, we're just getting going. <laughs> so we got a while to go. Yeah, we're in. Uh, let's see, week should be week three, I believe. Because of the special session, it seems like y'all been you know, but it that just goes inside the regular session, right? And so we're actually in right. Right. We're, <laughs> as far as actually legislative days, we're in uh, week three, I believe. All right. So in week three. Uh, first of all, let's catch up on uh, last week, too, because you had some bills. Obviously, we had talked about you were working last week. What what happened last week? Well, we had uh, two of my bills. We had House Bill 10, which um, is a seafood tax break bill. And uh, what that does is it allows the commercial seafood industry to, uh, for the first time, to take advantage of the same tax breaks that the farmers get. So... Um, that would mean that right now you uh, you get a uh, avalorum tax break on shrimp boats, but this extends it to you know the other crab boats and oysters and that sort of thing. And then uh, you're you'd be exempt from taxes on nets and bait and machinery and equipment that sort of thing. And what that does that brings it in line with farming. I mean, farmers have been doing that since. The early 20th century, and this just brings in line. I mean, really, they are farmers. They're farming the sea, and, you know, they're subject to the same issues that farmers have as far as over-regulation, foreign imports flooding the market. Um, so this will this will be a big boost to Alabama. I mean, seafood industry just sales alone from Alabama seafood are around $591 million, and they employ around 13,000 people. So... For our area, it's very, very important, but it also impacts the rest of the state because uh, catfish farms and freshwater fish, uh, commercial seafood and freshwater areas upstate. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how you got as well. Yeah, how you? I mean, because there's a challenge for people to understand politics of a state that is uh you know we've got our two counties down here uh that that are touching the the salt water below the salt line here uh but you got the whole rest of the state you've got to get interested in your bill right so you got to make yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the reality right yeah that's where the <laughs> politics part of it comes in and uh you know people one thing we've really tried to do over the last several years is bring down other um, House members and other members of the Senate, Senator David Sessions and I have worked to try to bring other members down and uh, let them see firsthand, you know, the seafood processing plants, go to the docks, that sort of thing, and and see this in action. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's a hard sell sometimes, but mm-hmm. really this, I mean, people understood it. They got it, and it passed 100 to nothing out of the House. Nice. Uh, so... Good bipartisan vote, Republican, Democrats, they all, you know, saw the need for it. And then um, also I passed out of the House, House Bill 39, which is the Strength Alabama Homes funding bill, which that's uh, fortified roofs. And, uh, you know, we're all familiar with the Strength Alabama Homes program that will give a $10,000 grant to uh, to uh, do your roof. And this what it's always been plagued by lack of funding. And what my bill does is it allows monies that are left over in the budget for fiscal year 2022 to go, 20, everything over 25% go back to the Strength Alabama Homes Program to try to knock out um, any backlogs. And then for the first time, actually, too, it allows the commissioner 
of insurance to allocate up to 50% of its budget to strength Alabama homes. The way that that has always been funded and will continue to be funded by this is insurance companies donate to a pool twice a year to, uh, to pay for strength Alabama homes. But this will allow the insurance commissioner to budget, put a line item in his budget, and therefore it will be a more steady stream of income moving forward and uh, into the program. And that'll, that'll eliminate these issues that people have had in the past where, you know, they go on, they register, and they have to wait two or three years. Uh, hopefully, with this, these days will be behind us. So, okay, that's, I mean, that's big news. The house that was ninety-eight to nothing, and that goes to the Senate as well. Hey, you don't see any problems in the Senate with that, or do you? What are you thinking? I don't think so. I think we're good this year. You know, last year it got caught up in some political issues in the Senate, and uh, this year I think we're we've worked all of that out, and I think we're I, I think hopefully it's going to be good sailing. The the insurance department's behind it, and that's always a plus. And um, Speaker of the House, Mac McCutcheon, is a very big proponent of it. He came down after Hurricane Sally, and we rode around and looked at uh, different houses and roofs and that sort of thing. And he's a very big supporter of our efforts to get more funding to that program. So, Well, because, you uh, know, I mean, you realize that you hear it from your constituents. I hear it from my constituents on this radio station. Every, since you first came in and started talking about that with me, it would be inundated with emails and, and texts and people saying, man, I registered and I didn't know that it was happening. And, I, you know, I was put on a wait list, this and that. People are excited about the program. They see the success, but they're like, I can't. I can't, nothing's happening here for me. Right. And that's, that's just always plagued that program is that it's always been more popular than the amount of funding that's available. And, uh, and, you know, we're actually too, there was an amendment to the bill that opens it up to more contractors to participate. And so that gives people more choice and it gives more contract, more contractors the opportunity to participate in the program and spread that around some more. So I think that, uh, Senator Jack Williams will be handling that for us in the Senate. And then on that first bill, that seafood bill, Senator David Sessions will be handling that for us in the Senate. So, All right. Uh, so those, uh, so, so they're, they're looking good. You have a good, you've had a good track record on <laughs> bringing some bills what? that, where's your, how about some contentious bills, Congressman? Come on. <laughs> hey, hey I'm, a, I'm a consensus builder, Sean. I, I, that's what I like to do, you know. Um, I, I I, I really, um, I, I think that to me, that's kind of a, says that a lot of the bills I bring are, you know, issues that are important to people and, and, uh, you know, people vote because they, people in the house vote on those favorably because they, uh, they, they see it helping the people of Alabama. So. And remind folks too, just a quick, cause it- People know. People don't follow it. Obviously, they know that a Nye's law passed, and then they get frustrated and they say, "But why is Nye's law being used in this case or that case down here?" We we still have another step to go. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, it's a constitutional amendment, and you know the, the Alabama Constitution gets tricky of what has to go on the ballot and what doesn't have to go on the ballot, and um, pretty much any time that you change the actual criminal code or you change you're, you're making dramatic changes to something that is in the Constitution. You're going to have to do a constitutional amendment. And the way that this works is it passed the House unanimously, and it passed the Senate unanimously, and the governor signed it into law last summer. And um, it now has to go on the ballot next fall. So fall of 2022, it will be on the ballot. Okay. And that's the final step. It has to, has y'all, to pass. Y'all hear that. But that when you see that, it'll be, you know, on the back, you'll have, you know, the voting for offices, but then you get to the CAs. You, people need to pay attention to that. Sometimes people get done with that, you know, oh, okay, I voted for the person, I voted for that office, and then don't go fill out the rest of the sheet. That's right. I mean, it, you, you'll have to look at that because it'll, it will be on the ballot, and it is uh, all of the, the mayors of the 10 major cities in Alabama the police chiefs, the sheriffs, the district attorneys, judges associations, they're all supportive of this as well as, you know, victims' rights groups. Um, it's uh, it's something that, we've, you know, we've seen examples of that. I mean, recently in Mobile yeah. County, we had the uh, young girl that was tragically murdered by her boyfriend who yep. was actually out on bond for murder. For murder, and yes. yes, for murder. He, 
<laughs> you know, you technically can't hold someone without bond unless they're charged with capital murder in the state of Alabama. And so what an eyes law does is it allows for the first time uh, district attorneys to request that someone that's charged with a violent Class A felony be held without bond and you hold a hearing and present evidence of why they are either a imminent risk to the community, a flight risk, or an imminent threat to themselves. And the judge can grant the hearing, deny the hearing, and then after they have the hearing, can grant bond or deny bond. And this will really keep people like that. I mean, the guy committed a murder in the fall, or he was accused of committing a murder, but there's no way that guy should be out on the street. And, of course, he was out on the street, and two months later he killed a young girl from Theodore. And so, you know, a Nye's Law will really put a dent in that. It'll, uh, it'll it'll help stop that revolving door of people making bond when they shouldn't be out on the street. We'll, we'll be reminding folks in October, or, you know, uh, September and October before we go to the polls in November. I, last week, about this time last week, over in the House, uh, or up in the not over, but up. Uh, in the House last week, it was a big deal that they brought the, I think, Del Marsh, they called it the ultimate school choice bill. And it got a lot of conversation going here on the radio station, a lot of conversation going on around the state. I saw a comment here, though, from House Majority Leader uh, Ledbetter that he he doesn't think this is, I mean, must it, it seems maybe it has traction in the Senate, but not in the House. I mean, how do you see it as a member of the House? What, what do you see with this bill? Well, it's got a long way to go. <laughs> it, uh, you know, I mean, basically we are talking about, you know, there was no conversation to, about this bill at all. And uh, then all of a sudden it's really sprung on everyone after the session has already started. And I know there's been quite a bit of pushback from, you know, homeschooling groups and, um, you know, different public schools, private schools. You know, it's just, and I think the majority leader said uh, that something to the effect of, you know, we we're talking about overhauling the entire education system in the state of Alabama in a matter of a few weeks. It's something we need to discuss or, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, but something to that effect. And um, I think it's got a long way to go. I mean, it, you know, it's going to be tough. Let's put it that way. Okay, I so, think so. You, but, I'm not I, on education policy, so right. I, I, you know, I can't speak for the committee. Yeah, but you are, which, but uh, you're a House member. I mean, if you know if this, yeah, yeah, sure. But, but I, I, and that's what I feel, though. I think it's gonna, it, it's got a long, a long way to go to actually get a vote on the floor. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it still hasn't passed the Senate; it just passed out of committee. So that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to pass the Senate, or that's even going to get to the floor in the Senate. Let's go to the, I mean, it, yes, but could this be the start of, you know, it, it doesn't pass this year, but is this now definitely. that it's in play now that it's ball, I mean, is this ball in play and we see it next session or, or, or the session after that? Definitely. This, well, well, you know, Senator Marsh is not coming back. He's right. retiring, but somebody um, will take it up. I mean, somebody uh, will pick that but, up, but, but, but the conversation wise, you're correct about that. Oftentimes, and I think that's where the majority leader was, was, heading with that his comments were that you know oftentimes a bill of this magnitude that's overhauling uh the entire process it, it takes a while i mean you know in Iowa's law um i brought that in 2019 passed the house bogged down in the senate 2020 we had the COVID year passed the house you know nothing really passed the senate and then last year it, it finally made its way through and that happens often. You'll see bills. I've seen bills that have been brought for 20 years, and then they finally pass. You know, mm-hmm. it just sometimes it takes that that conversation, and sometimes it takes a change in in some of the members of the legislature. And you know, it just that's the way the process works. Yeah, it's so, int- it's, it's interesting. So the conversation is starting. It may pass this year, but I think it's I think it's. Uh, I mean, a total overhaul of our education system, I think it's more likely that the conversation gets started this year and it's built upon for, you know, next session or the the following session. Just joining us, talking to Representative Chip Brown. Before we wrap up here, thinking about, like, what dominates session. Last year, at this time, the big dominations was gaming. 
And it, it's funny yep. that it was such a, I mean, it, it took up the, uh, took up the air in the conversations coming out of Montgomery. Here we are in 2022. What do you hear? I mean, it, is, is there anything, be, I mean, I know there's discussions. Is there anything that you're expecting to look at here? They, I mean, are we, y'all going to be voting on something? What Give people an update back well, here at home. You know, I don't know. The, uh, the conversations are uh, all the way across the board of everything you can imagine. I'm, I do know there is a concerted effort to, uh, by some to try to bring some type of legislation that was similar to last year's legislation. Um, I would like to see, and I've always said this, I would like to see a clean lottery bill, which a clean lottery bill is just a lottery, a standalone lottery by itself, and then have that as a separate entity and then have um, you know casino gaming and sports betting as a separate entity also and i and there's talk of that as well so you know we'll we'll uh, we will know things will start flushing out in the next week or two really where we are with that i mean if that's even a possibility to have this happen in the session i mean if you recall last year the ball really didn't get rolling on that until the second half of the session and uh you know we were we knew a bill was coming but we didn't know what what it was going to look like, and the bill that was dropped originally in the Senate was not, <laughs> by any measure, the bill that made it to the House, which happens all the time. You know, they get amended and they change, and and uh, but so, you know, the bill that got to the House by the time it got down to the House, we were in the last couple of weeks of session, and it went all the way down to midnight on the last day, and it just we couldn't, you know, couldn't get there. It was uh, there were issues that often pop up out of the the last before a bill like that hits the floor, and just they weren't there. If you recall, in twenty nineteen, we lottery bill passed uh, the Senate and got down to the House and went down and towards the end of the session and failed by one vote. So. Yeah, well, we, we we're often told, you know, that as much as people, I mean, I agree with you. I'd like to see each individual, ent- you know, uh, lottery and casino and sports come up separately. But I'm told by those much wiser than me that that's you, that's not going to get done in Montgomery. I mean, th- to to give up on that, should I give up on that? I don't know. I mean, you know that it it, it is it, it there is that possibility okay. because. I mean that showed right there. It, it it fell by one vote, and I do know personally some of the individuals that voted against that that lottery bill in 2019 now favor voting for a lottery to give the people the opportunity to vote on a lottery. I mean, it's really what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We're yeah, we're not. We, yeah. we, we can't pass the lottery. It's, it's a, a constitutional CA. amendment. I mean, yeah. this year, if we were going to do something like that, honestly, Sean, this would be an ideal time to do that because then it could be on the ballot and in the fall. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I think that, I think that that is not, uh, it's much harder to get them through as individual pieces. But I do think if you got one, there would be an opportunity for the second one to, to come along behind it. And, uh, so I, I think that the lottery of course would be the easier of the two to get through. I mean, there's just no doubt about that. There we go. Um, but I would love to see them done like that, doing, doing piecemeal where do the lottery, let the people vote on the lottery, and do gaming if that's what we so choose to do and have the people vote on that as well. Be nice. If that happens, uh, I'll, I'll be cheering. Representative, we appreciate your time. Uh, if we don't check you back before, I'm going to get you before next week and, and, and talk about what's coming up. That sounds great. Thank you, Sean. All right. There have he is. Good week. You have a great week, too. There he is. District 105 Representative Chip Brown, and we're coming right back. This is Midday Mobile with Sean Sullivan on FM Talk 106.5. Right, 1256 FM Talk 106.5 Midday Mobile. I want you all to say hello to my buddy David McCrary at LCM Motor Cars. And let's talk some inventory. Even though you were busy over the weekend, it sounds like the inventory came on up because you all bought vehicles too. Yeah, we had a big day Saturday um, and ended up buying as many as we sold Saturday, which is rare to buy stuff on Saturdays. We um, just inventory staying staying good, and we've got plenty to choose from. And obviously, the prices are right because we've got a lot of traffic going on right now. People are everywhere. 
Yeah, that's something for people to think about selling vehicles to y'all. I talk about the vehicles I bought from you over time, but, you know, I, my parents, I brought them to you to sell a vehicle. Uh, y'all are always looking for those great local trades. We are. We are. And um, anything we can get that's worth the money, I mean, we're not trying to steal anything from anybody. We'll pay you good money for them. Just bring us, bring them out here. Let's see. All right. Uh, let's talk about coming to see you. How do they find you online and in the real world? Well, we're at lcmotorcars.com, and we are at Highway 90 and Plantation on Government Street, or Highway 90 Plantation in Theodore, excuse me. Very and, good. And um, give us a call, 251-375-0068. Thanks, David. Bungalow. <laughs> <laughs> he did it to me. All right. There, there is uh, the, the jokester, David McCrary from LCM Motor Cars. We were talking before the before we went on about a very grown-up conversation about words that make me laugh still as I, I'm looking at 50 here soon. Um, the word bungalow makes me laugh, and it makes my children laugh. And that's, uh, you know, it's a, and trousers, too. I don't know. Y'all have a, y'all have a word like that that you're, you should be grown-up enough to be able to say without giggling? You text it to me because uh, I'm not. I'm not like because bungalow is just, <laughs> since I was a kid. I've, and it, we've got like one time in our life we've gone somewhere that they said it was a bungalow we were staying in. I was so excited and I, I used it in every sentence. I was like, yeah, we'll carry the bags down to the bungalow and uh, maybe we can leave the bungalow to go get lunch. And the bu- <laughs> one day I'm going to maybe I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to grow up. All right. Coming up on uh, next hour, uh, Kim Garrett, Victory Health Partners, joins us. But when we come back from the news. Another few days in this all-out attack on a podcaster out there. Yes, more knives out for Joe Rogan. I'm going to give you my take on it. I'd like to hear from y'all as well when we return right here on Midday Mobile.